All right, so 717 video for this week. This is uh, right after we have celebrated the Lord's Supper together as a gathering on, at 717 on Sunday night. And the question was quite simple, uh, but a very good and important question. What is the Lord's Supper? We just celebrated it together. And so there's a question about, well, what is it that we did Sunday night? And I really long to answer this as best I can, as quickly as I can in this video format. So let me just start real quickly. 3,500 years ago, Israel is in bondage in Egypt. The Passover meal is celebrated where the blood of a lamb is put on the doorpost and the the angel of the Lord passes over the Jewish homes that have faithfully followed the instructions of the Lord. And on that night, it was a night of all nights, the most important night in the Jewish calendar. Uh, and that night they are liberated by the power of God from Egyptian bondage. 1,500 years later, around 30 AD, so about 2,000 years ago, Jesus is gathered with his disciples, a Jewish gathering, during the time of Passover in Israel, and they are celebrating the Passover meal, the Seder meal as it's called. And during the Seder meal, there is a time in which bread is brought out, unleavened bread, and, uh, and this, it looks something like this, matzah bread, unleavened bread. And there was a tradition to uh, pierce the bread with the holes that you see through there, and then the bread was broken and, uh, and then shared among the community. And then uh, also on that evening, the cup was shared. In fact, there are four times they passed the cup together, but there's one very important time, the cup of redemption, that Jesus seems to be sharing with his disciples. Because he says, in this cup, which represents the shedding of my blood, and in this bread, which represents the breaking of my body, a new uh, a new era of redemption, redemptive history, like Israel being liberated from Egyptian bondage. Now, everyone would be liberated from the bondage of human sin with a new lamb, not the Passover lambs from Egypt 3,500 years ago, but the lamb of God, as Jesus is referred to by John uh, the Baptist in the Gospel of John chapter 1. And other places, there's a reference to Jesus as the lamb, the Passover lamb. Paul says that about him. And so in the Lord's Supper, Jesus is celebrating this ancient Passover Jewish tradition, this 1,500 years of tradition. And Jesus takes that 1,500 years of tradition and he reinstitutes it, not in the liberation of Jews from Egypt uh, uh, during bondage, uh, during their bondage under Moses' leadership and the Passover lamb. But now he says, no, there's a new covenant, a new relationship between God and people that is going to happen when the next day after this breaking of bread and sharing of the cup, Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God will die on a cross. His body will be broken. He'll be beaten, uh, hit, struck, spat upon, and his blood will be spilled. He'll be pierced through. He'll be nailed to a cross. That in that, as the Lamb from Jewish history back at the time of their Egyptian captivity, just that the blood of that lamb allowed God to pass over those houses in terms of his judgment. Now there's a new lamb, one lamb, for not just Jewish people and not for physical bondage for a time, but instead one lamb, a perfect lamb, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whose blood was slain and body broken to cover the sins for all uh, believers in him, all people, all nations, all uh, ethnicities, and that at the Passover meal, Jesus was remembering, that's what the Jews were supposed to do, remember this night, it is a night of nights to you, and you are to remember or commemorate it through the Passover meal, and Jesus takes that and gives to the church a new commemorative meal, a meal to, a meal to remember what he did. And we call that the Lord's Supper or communion or uh, there's a lot of different words you might hear for it. But what it is is the breaking of bread, a matzah bread, uh, a bread without any leaven in it so it doesn't rise, and the sharing of a cup. Some traditions will use wine. We use grape juice here, just Baptist tradition. But either way, the, the juice from the grapevine. And that what this symbolized was the breaking of the body of Christ 
and the pouring out of his blood, that the cup reminded us of what he did in terms of his shed blood, and the breaking of bread reminds us of his broken body. So that all who believe in him are covered, like the ancient Jewish slaves were covered when the angel came into the Egyptian nation. Uh, now, 2,000 years later, uh, we are now covered by the blood of Christ when put over uh, our own lives that God's judgment passes over us in this new relationship between us and God through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Passover Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So when you take the bread and you eat it, you're reminded of Jesus' broken body, which bought your salvation from God's judgment. And when you drink the cup, you are reminded that the spilt blood of Jesus Christ has purchased or bought for you or provided for you uh, everlasting salvation from God's judgment. That God, when he comes to your life, he will pass over you with reference to his judgment and instead deal with you with grace and mercy because of what Jesus has done. And what the Lord's Supper, communion, some, some churches call it some other different things, but what it does is remind us, it allows us to preach a message to ourselves and to one another that God has saved us through his son's broken body and his son's spilt blood, so that when you eat the bread and drink the wine, it gives physical uh, expression to the heart's gratitude for what God has done, and it does it by engaging all the senses, the, the sense of touch, the sense of taste and smell, sound. You, you, you see the bread, you hear the bread, and you hear uh, uh, you, you know, the crunching of the bread or the breaking of the bread. You taste the bread and the, and the wine, or the grape juice in our case. And those things engage all the senses and allow us to express to God gratitude for what he has done through his son's broken body and spilt blood. And in doing so, we enter into 2,000 years of history for the church, where for 2,000 years the church has been taking unleavened bread and, and the juice of grapes to celebrate or commemorate, remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. So I hope that helps when we celebrate the Lord's table. So when you come forward to take the bread and the cup, what you're doing is you're proclaiming or declaring or preaching to yourself and to everyone in the room, Jesus Christ, his body was broken for me, his blood was spilled for me. And this moment, this time of Lord's table gives me a chance to express with my body, with my mouth, what gratitude I have for what he's done for me. I hope that helps. This next week, we move on to the exaltation of Christ in Philippians chapter 2 and that great Christological hymn. I hope you'll join us Sunday night, 717, here in the Common Grounds. We'll see you then. God bless you.